by this session is on transition probability metrics, okay? So we often list the transition probabilities in a matrix. Matrix is called the state transition matrix or the one-step transition probability matrix. And it's usually denoted by capital letter P, which is boarding, okay? So assuming the size of the states are zero, one, two, or two K, then the one-step transition probability matrix is given by the equation below. So we have our present state at the row side and the column side is showing the future state, okay? So we can read this as the transition from state one to state zero in one step. This is going to be the transition from state one to itself in one step. This is going to be the transition from state one to um, state two in one step, okay? So, um, this is another way we can show the transition probability matrix. So we insert the probabilities here. This is going to be the side for um, the present state and this is going to be the side for the future state, okay? So let's take a look at some properties of the one-step transition probability matrix. Now the, the transition probability matrix is a square matrix because the process are the um, future state and the process of the current state both take values in the same state space of size k, okay? And also the entry p index i j is the probability of going from state i to state j, okay? Where the probability is going to be non-negative. Also, the rows represent now or from the current state where each row sum to one, okay? That's the representation. And finally, the columns represent nest or to the future state where the columns do not add up to one. Now take note that in the case where the columns do add up to one, that is the column um, total do add up to one, then it means that we have a special case of the transition probability matrix known as the doubly stochastic matrix, okay? So we will be looking at doubly stochastic matrix in our subsequent tutorial, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at an example. Suppose that in a certain city, if it rains today, then it will rain tomorrow with probability of 0 0.8. And if it is dry today, then it will rain tomorrow with probability of 0 0.4. So we want to find the one-step transition probability matrix for this process. Let's take a look at the solution. So here, the state of the Markov chain are wet day and dry day, okay? So let's denote wet day with capital W and let's denote dry day with D, capital D, okay? So how do we estimate the one-step transition probability? How do we obtain that? So here we have our current day, right, which is going to be today, and we have our um, next day, which is going to be tomorrow. So from the question, if it rains today, then it will rain tomorrow with probability of 0 0.8. So if it is wet today, then it will rain tomorrow with probability of 0 0.8, okay? So intuitively, if it is wet today, then it's going to be wet tomorrow with probability of 0 0.2, all right? So from the question, if it is dry today, then it will rain tomorrow with probability of 0 0.4. So if it is dry today, then it's going to be wet tomorrow with probability of 0 0.4. So intuitively, you can see that if it is dry today, then it's going to be dry tomorrow with probability of 0 0.6, okay? So once we have this, you can see that the rows will sum up to one. This was what sum up to one, okay? But the columns do not sum up to one, okay? So this is going to be the traditional transition probability matrix, okay? So in the case where the columns do add up to one, then it means that we have a doubly stochastic matrix, okay? So we'll take a look at that in our subsequent tutorial. So let's take a look at the next example. A Markov chain has the one-step transition probability matrix defined below. So here we have three states, state zero, state one, and state two. So these are future states and we have our current state, okay? Now, if it is known that the process started from state one at time zero, then we want to find the probability of observing the process in state one at time zero, and also observing the process in state zero at time one and also observing the process in state two at time two concurrently. Okay, so how do we obtain the solution? How do we do this? Um, let A be equivalent to the process in state one at time zero, 
and let's be the equivalent to the process in state zero at time one. And let's see the equivalent to the process in state two at time two. Then using the multiplication rule and Markovian property, we have this, okay? So the probability of A intersection B intersection C, which can be expressed in this form, okay? So this is going to be our A, B, C. So this is going to be the first representation. So this is C giving B and A, and this is going to be B giving A multiplied by probability of A, okay? So we know by the Markovian property that the uh, transition from the probability that we are going to be in a future state, given the current state and the past state is independent of the past state, but depends only on the current state, okay? So that's why we don't see this here. We just did a current state. Look at the index set. This is at time one, this is at time zero. So it will not depend on this, but depend only on the current state, okay? So that's what we have here. Then we multiply by the second expression. Then we can multiply by the third expression here, okay? So this is basically uh, the transition from state zero to state one in one step, okay? To look at the difference in the index set, it's going to be one. And also this is going to give us the transition from state one to state zero in one step. That's what we have here. And this is going to be one because uh, from the question, um, we are told that the process is starting from state one at time zero. So that probability is going to be one, okay? So here we have these probabilities. Let's take a look at that. So this is the probability and the transition probability from state zero to state two is 0 0.1 and the transition probability from state one to state zero is 0 0.3, okay? So that is basically what we have here. So once you multiply, you get this result, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at the last example. Suppose that um, this process is the weather condition by the 11th hour at the close of day N. The following data is a record of the weather condition for the past 21 days, okay? So here we have zero to denote rainy, and we have one to denote um, sun, okay? So on the first day, by the 11th hour, the weather condition was observed to be rainy. On the second day, by the 11th hour, the weather condition was observed to be sunny in that order, okay? So I want to estimate the transition metrics for this process, okay? So how do we do that? Let's take a look at the solution. So first we have to count the number of transitions from state I to state J, okay, which is denoted by capital N index IJ. So how do we get that? So this is going to be the transition from um, rain to rain. So this is our current state and our future state. Okay, this is going to be today and this is going to be tomorrow. So we have, if it um, rains today, we are going to look at the count that it rains today and it's going to rain tomorrow. It rains today and it's going to be sunny tomorrow. It um, is sunny today and it's going to be rainy tomorrow. And it is sunny today and it's going to be sunny tomorrow, okay? So how do we get a count? Let's go take a look at the question. So yeah, we want a transition from zero to zero, zero to zero, okay? So let's get a count. Zero to zero, we can see the first one here. So this is going to be one. There's another one, so this is going to be two. There's another one, so this is going to be three. We have another one, so this is going to be four. We have another one, this is going to be five. We have another one, this is going to be six, okay? So the zero to zero transition is six. Now let's take a look at zero to one. That is rainy to sun transition. So zero to one, zero to one. So this is the first one, zero to one. So this is going to be one. Another zero to one, so we have two. Another zero to one, so we have three. Another zero to one, so we have four. Another zero to one, so we have five, okay? So this is going to be five. Then let's take a look at the transition one to zero, that is sun to rain. So let's take a look at the count. So one to zero, one to zero. This is the first one, one to zero. So we have one. One to zero again, we have two. One to zero again, we have three. One to zero again, we have four, okay? So um, this is going to give us four. Now let's take a look at one to one. Okay, the transition sunny to sunny. One to one. So one to one, this is going to be one. Uh, one to one. Okay, this is going to be two. Another one to one is going to be three. 
and one to one again, there's going to be four, one to one again, there's going to be five, okay? So um, there we go, five. So now that we have this count, we can then estimate the one-step transfer probabilities as follows. So to get zero to zero, this is going to be six divided by six plus five, okay? Then also zero to one is going to be five divided by six plus five as a total. Then this is going to be a transition from one to zero. So this is going to be four divided by four plus five, okay? Four divided by four plus five. Then the transition from one to one is going to be five. Um, divided by four plus five, okay? So once we have this, you realize that once you sum the rows, you are going to have one, okay? So this is how to obtain the solution. So this is going to be a trial question. I'll leave the solution in the description of this video so you can check it out, please. If you find value to this video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.